Procreate is my favorite drawing app available for the iPad, and there are a lot of features there. So today I'm diving into 10 lesser known features in there that I use all the time that are really, really helpful. Number one is the paint bucket tool. It is not an actual paint bucket per se, but a lot of drawing apps have these little paint bucket icons, and what you can do with them is you can draw a shape and then use the paint bucket icon to fill in that shape with a solid color. Now at first glance, Procreate doesn't have anything quite like it, but then I found this video by my buddy Eric Merced. Turns out it does have a feature that works like the paint bucket tool. The trick is, is that you have to drag the color selection circle, the one that's up here in the corner, you drag that into the area that you want to fill. You can also use this to recolor solid colors that you've already put in place. Just make sure that your lines are completely closed before dropping a color in there. It also has this interesting effect. It pays attention to similar colors that you've placed on that solid color and it'll like recolor the whole thing. Huge time saver, great feature. Number two is the ability to lock in a layer in order to repaint it. This feature has a name, it's called Alpha Lock, and how it works in Procreate is you go up here to the uh, little layers menu, you open that up. Now, choose the layer that you want to draw on, slide it to the right, and what you will see when you let go of that is there are these little white brackets in the corner of the little preview image. What that means is you've just activated Alpha Lock. Now I can paint away on that layer and the paint is only going to show up on areas that I've already painted. When I first started using Procreate, this was one of the things I really wanted and it turns out it was already in there. I just didn't know quite how to use it. Number three, select and duplicate a layer. I'm throwing this in there because it's a newer feature and I think it's a really great feature. It's really helpful. What you have to do is take the selection tool, you select the area that you want to duplicate and then there's this icon that just pushes it to a new layer. Whereas before you would have to copy it and then paste it into a new layer. So much easier now. I love it because if I'm drawing a panel over and over again, I can just duplicate it, maybe resize the rough pencils and, and clean it up from there. It's a huge time saver. Number four, you can resize your video output. One of my favorite little features about Procreate, which is pretty well known, is this idea that it saves every single move you make on the canvas and you can take those moves and output a video from there. Most of the speed draws on my channel are actually videos that I've pulled directly from Procreate. By default, the video quality isn't that good, but but you can change that. Changing the video settings isn't directly in the app. You have to actually leave it and go to the iPad settings to find it. Once you're in the iPad settings, you have to scroll down to Procreate, and then you will see the recording option down here near the bottom. You can disable it completely, or you can go all the way up to 4K video. Just keep in mind that the higher quality video that you're outputting, the more time it's gonna to take to render that video for you. It also means that the video file size itself is gonna get bigger and going to take up more room on your iPad. How many is that? Four, I need six more? Quick break. Number five, change the amount of time it takes for the eyedropper tool to appear. All right, so you've probably already stumbled upon how the eyedropper tool works. If you hold your finger down on the canvas, it is going to help you select a color. I really like the way they've kind of done this with touch instead of creating another icon. However, oftentimes if I'm drawing too slow or if I'm trying to figure out where I want to draw to, I accidentally sample like the background color, which is usually like the canvas color and it turns white and it's frustrating. And so what I want it to do is appear a little bit slower. I can do that. What you want to do is go to this little settings drop down and then there's the little preferences circle menu. Tap that. At the bottom, you're going to see that there's an advanced gestures control. Tap that. There's a couple things in here. You can do things like limit your Apple Pencil settings and all sorts of stuff. But what we came here for is right here. This is this slider. What you're wanna, gonna wanna do is if I want it to take longer to appear, I can slide it to the right. If I want it to take less time, I'm gonna slide it to the left. What does this quick menu do? Huh, look at that. You can make it do things like flip the canvas and copy. Neat. I'm gonna turn it back off now. Welcome new viewers. Long time subscribers know I only pretend to know what I'm talking about. Number six, how to draw a straight line. Now this is another one you may have accidentally stumbled upon while just naturally drawing and procreate, but there's some other like little features built into it, which are kind of cool. So the trick here is if you start drawing a line and then stop, but keep your pencil or fingertip on the canvas, it's going to turn to a straight line. Pretty cool. The key here is that you have to actually start drawing and then hold it as opposed to just holding it, in which case that'll just bring up that eyedropper tool I mentioned before. Now, once you get that straight line, here's where it gets kind of cool. What you can do is you could obviously drag it anywhere you want, but if I take a second finger and place it on the canvas, all of a sudden that snaps to 15 degree increments. So now I can draw a perfectly vertical line, a perfectly horizontal line, a 45 degree angle line, a 15 degree angle line. You can draw all sorts of stuff 
Really, really handy, especially if you're drawing comic panels or have to do something with perspective. Speaking of perspective, there is a perspective grid in Procreate as well, and that is our number seven. Tap the little settings gear and then go to the canvas section. There, the very first option you're going to see is the perspective grid. Now you're gonna notice here, it says early access. Early access is a way of getting features before the release to the general public, kind of like a beta test. Now this costs an extra $1.99, but if you're really into perspective stuff, I've found this to be pretty stable and really solid. Or you can just wait a few months and I'm sure it's gonna be in a release coming up. So here's how it works. Once you toggle it on, you can tap edit perspective grid. I can tap anywhere and that's going to create a perspective point. I can drag that anywhere I want on my canvas. It can be above, below, on either side. If I want a second point, I can just tap anywhere again and it's going to create that second point. You can add a total of three perspective points. But there's a secondary feature that goes along with this that makes it really, really useful. Next up, go to your layers palette, open it up, and go to the layer that you want to draw on. If you just tap once on the layer that you're going to draw on, one of your options you're going to see now is called Perspective Assist. By turning that on, all the lines that you draw are going to snap to your perspective guide. This is really nice for drawing buildings, perspective types things, quick perspective-y sketches. And like I said before, it's pretty solid for a beta feature. Number eight is merging layers. It's not evident that you could do it right away, but all you really have to do is take the two layers that you want to merge, put one finger on one, one finger on the other, and squeeze them together. I have to admit, this is one of the clunkier things in Procreate, um, but if you keep trying to squeeze them together, eventually they will merge together. Number nine, Canvas sizes. What? You've always been able to do canvas size. That's easy. Yes, but I'm talking about using inches and centimeters and specific measurements in your canvas. I'm including this because it's a pretty new feature that they've just added in recent weeks. Before I'd have to go uh, find a calculator and actually do the math to figure out how many pixels by how many pixels I have to make this in order to make it the size that I need it. If you haven't checked in on it in a while, you may have easily missed it. In order to get to it, we have to hit the plus button to create a new canvas, uh, but just looking at your default canvases, you're not gonna see it. You have to go down here and click on uh, new canvas in order to open that up and see those features down here. And here you see our centimeters, inches, and all that fun stuff. So here we are at the end, number 10, gradients. This is kind of a hack, but it's an awesome hack. I used to actually import PNGs to do gradients, but then I learned that someone made an awesome set of gradient brushes. The brushes were created by somebody named Sculpting Man, and the linky is in the description. There are a lot of brushes here, normal gradients, radial gradients, gradients that look like steel. It's cool because some of them are transparent, so you can like overlap your gradients and put them on cool angles and all sorts of stuff. So that's the 10. I keep finding new stuff. So if I've missed something or there's something really cool that I didn't cover that you think is worth sharing, Please, please tell me in the comments down below. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys in a week or two.